Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 11 of Kerbal Wars. I think it's episode 11. Anyway, we start with a launch of kind of a space launch system looking rocket with a ridiculously large fairing. And this is bound for uh, Battle Station 1. I'm finally fitting the actual armored hangars to the... Uh, to the battle station to really complete it because my fleet heads off to Duna to try and secure um, well secure Duna it does raise the question of why aren't we spending more of our resources trying to secure Kerbin because uh, well our kind of lightly armed fighters on Odin carrier and our out of fuel and out of weaponry corvette and our um, small uncompleted station don't look like much to the enemy I'm sure given that they've got the resources to have a station around Duna at this point. So, uh, yeah, this is um, finishing off, well, maybe not finishing off, but making a workable station for, uh, well, for the future of, well, Kerbin, because we need to defend it. So, yes, anyway, uh, we'll ditch all of that and uh, just take a look at the hangars we've launched. You couldn't really get a great look of it there, but you can kind of see they're kind of frames that fit my heavy fighters. Um, not the little um, scorpions, because they're just for they're good for hangers because they're really small and compact and can, can get through doors quite easily. Um, anyway, we'll ditch the stage and send it back to Kerbin because I don't want um, my space all cluttered with space launch system stages because they are rather large. And within this, we have a little service module temporarily in one of the hangers. It's just a small tank with an engine and some RCS and things. However, I did forget to bring torque, so um, well, I forgot to bring a reaction wheel, so I have no torque other than the gimbal on the engine and reaction control systems. So that'll have to do, um, but there is a fighter on the station if I need to assist myself. So yeah, here we are coming into the uh, battle station, and it is becoming evening, but uh, I've got a solution for the <laughs> the recording in the evening. It's a fairly simple solution, it's just up the brightness. So yeah, there's battle station 1, and I'm having a bit of trouble uh, getting into the right position to slow down. So I'm going to go and grab the fighter so that I have a little more torque, and just a little more control, and more RCS, and all of that. So it's just a little more balanced, and then we'll put this on the station. So, yes, transitioning into night as it is the evening, I guess, in orbital. It only lasts 15 minutes in Carbal Space Program. Okay, so this uh, filter is a little bit um, bright. It's actually, I, I prefer it to some of the ones I've seen, actually. It works quite well. It's just um, the standard brighter filter in um, in Sony Vegas. So, yeah, this is my solution. I'm probably just going to put the uh, ambient light mod in this. I know I said no mods, but ambient light mod is just good for video makers. But yeah, this actually is better than I thought it would be. It makes it visible um, and not too harsh as some things are. So yeah, you can see what's going on here. Um, maybe I should have planned it a little better, but there's no point wasting fuel holding position all night. I think that's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, we'll either use filters um, or the ambient light mod, unless anyone has a very, very strong disposition to any mods on this series. But I'm uh, not too worried because, well, well not worried, but I'm not too, uh, you know, crazy about the whole absolutely no mods if it's gonna you know ruin video quality uh, so yeah that's also why I'm considering part welding although that hasn't been updated um, although part welding is kind of a little bit more complicated because I can't just weld all of like a hanger because that makes the armor basically useless or way overpowered one or the other but um, I will figure something out so yeah just a well I guess a small combination of mods that will allow the video to be of better quality and just easier to make really so yeah, we're just gonna grab the um, grab the hangar by docking in it, and then just fly it over to the sta station, which took a while, and uh, looked a little something like this. And then there was about ten minutes of me trying to get it on, getting very frustrated that the um, chase camera, when I selected the docking port as my control from here node, uh, it decided that, uh, to put chase camera at ninety degrees, which was a little annoying because that makes it rather hard to use chase camera if it's just not chase camera. Um, but anyway, so after all of that annoyingness, um, by morning I did actually manage to dock to the station, and it is I hate docking with these large docking ports. They're really good for like station like stability, but there's not that much kind of pull on them, and you have to get them very well lined up, which is very hard when you're flying a hangar. Um, with nothing but RCS, which isn't very well balanced. But anyway, that is on, and we have our, uh, we have a little, uh, well, we have our fighters and, well, one of our fighters docked to inside a hangar, so it should be protected unless it's, uh, shot from behind or through the small, kind of, um, openings in the hangar. It's not fully closed, it's just basically a little bit of armor I'm using because, well, it's just a battle station, I mean, that's the point. And obviously it has all these other docking ports and things. But yeah, I'm just gonna, grabbing all the fuel out of the uh, the service module because, well, we might as well grab the fuel. After all, we do need lots of fuel on the station if we're going to be in active combats. So yeah, this is made to hold two 
fighters, but can be extended as much as possible, and, uh, well, as much as I want. And, uh, yeah, it can hold other things on other docking ports, so it can be very well kitted out, but the main thing is just to have two very well-defended fighters for defending Kerbin, because, um, well, defending Kerbin's quite an important goal of mine, and, uh, well, the, fighter, the fighters I've designed for this, as you've seen that one, and you, if you've watched the whole series, you will have seen it in combat. Um, not actually particularly effectively, which is a shame since I have two headed out to Jewel. Uh, Jewel? Whoa, no. Uh, out to Duna. That'll be a little, uh, it's like, uh, we're at Jewel. It's like, bro, we were meeting at Duna. Ah, oh, bro, ah, oh, like you've never taken the wrong freaking turning off a freeway. Um, <laughs> yeah, but they, it's just because the blade that it fired at, the blade spacecraft, was really dense, so yeah. Um, the missiles can be outfitted differently, though, if I so desire. But yeah, it's a reasonably good fighter. It's a little bigger, very easy to maneuver, and not too many parts, so it is much better than the uh, Scorpion fighters. But anyway, we have many a thing to do today, most of it resupplying. I think pretty much all of it resupplying. Um, but yeah, this is my next fighter. My uh, same one as the one in the station, I believe. Maybe a very slight variant, but it's on this reasonably weird looking rocket. It has to have a 3.5 meter fairing because of its wingspan, so I had to put it on this weird looking rocket. Well, I didn't have to. I like to experiment with launch vehicles in this series, actually, because I'm not obviously going for too much realism. I just, you know, change up launch vehicles occasionally, so uh, that's what this is. And the boosters were strapped around the side because there was a bunch of extra space because I had to adapt it from a 3.5 meter down to a 2.5 meter rocket because it's a very light payload, or reasonably light. Um, and this was a, I left this all in, this whole launch in, because it was a really, really, like, perfect launch, like the launch profile was really good, um, even though it did burn up a bit here, well, a bit, but it's a heat, re heat resistant fairing and it did get to orbit, so I'm not too worried, but yeah, so I was quite impressed with that, I just pretty much left it uh, using the um, using the flight computer to do the gravity turn, although a gravity turn is technically not aided by uh, like a computer or a pilot, it's aided by gravity and aerodynamics, although it's, well, it's a fairly simple thing, it's just because your um, your, your uh, prograde mark is going to dip lower and lower just by nature of it being a, of you flying upwards. And then uh, if you're aerodynamically stable, you'll be pulled towards it, so you'll be pulled gradually down until you're just going horizontal. But anyway, we're in orbit now, and I'm going to leave this stage behind because it's very cumbersome and I hate it. Um, oh no, we're not in orbit yet, we were just getting on the right path because I launched in a rather terrible... Um, profile because, well, it was quite foolish of me. And uh, now I'm pointing the... I'm in a really weird orbit, but I skipped through all that because it was just a bit of um, changing a few things. So you've seen me do many a time before, just a radial burn and then a... No, it wasn't radial, it was a, a burn to the normal and then just, you know, my standard maneuver in where I... I'm in front of the station, so I burn prograde to raise the period of my orbit, so on the next pass around the planet I'll be in the same plane as the uh, station. It's much easier for me to explain uh, than show you every time. But anyway, we're just going to throw this in the hangar. Well, not throw it. Dock it very, very carefully, as it turned out. Uh, but yeah, it just moves in quite nicely. And uh, oh, it's one of the female pilots. This is. Um, I don't think it's my first. No, because I I launched a bunch of uh, women on my uh, carrier. I think or one of part of my fleet. So hopefully they'll take an. Uh, I was going to say an a horror type role, but they can take any role they like because I'm all about gender equality or. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, let's just transfer this back into the... Uh, transfer this. Uh, it's not an object, Peter. It's a person. Uh, well, a Kerbal. So we'll uh, put her in the station. So, I mean, she'll be able to move freely to the station as she pleases. Okay, now I'm just being ridiculous about not trying to insult women. Um, so, yeah, we'll launch uh, this next rocket. I'm just going to skip through this. It was fairly standard. Nothing too impressive. And, uh, yeah, just... Cut ahead? Good. This is my missile resupply to the Illustrious. Annoyingly, the Illustrious is on a really weird plane, though, so you can see here I had to burn north quite seriously to get there. But yeah, this is my main missile resupply. I haven't brought anything else. I'm going to bring some fuel later and um, some smaller missiles at some date. But these are quite important because this means that we have a very powerful... A weapon in orbit, which is important if they if the rebels turn up with some capital ships, which hopefully they won't. I'm hoping they're just gonna be focusing on Duna for a while, but still it helps to have a corvette in orbit. I'm thinking of maybe even putting up like a frigate or um, a dreadnought or something along those lines. Um, I guess a destroyer, that sort of thing. I guess I'll just look up what it would be because I well I like I like classification of ships and things. I'm I'm no navy buff, but uh, I do like classify. I just like classifying things. <laughs> I'm a classification nerd. So yeah, that's, uh, that's just use... Oh, you can see how the RCS works on this. It's kind of... I've 
put some RCS thrusters on the decouplers at the end so they're stable because each of these detaches and then um, can fly autonomously although I have to control it so not really autonomously it's just fun to pretend um, towards uh, the illustrious and then down the uh, missile tube into the uh, docking port and I'm gonna leave all the well I'm not gonna leave the transitioning over there because it's literally just flying but I'm gonna leave the whole docking in because it was actually quite fun um, I think I was watching this uh, some Sims gameplay or something uh, by uh, Funhouse so it wasn't super lame it was just them yelling at stuff but anyway here we are at the um, missile tube and we're just backing into it so you can see that I had to put those other RCS ports on the end because it needs to be balanced um, so that it's you know possible to fly and then the rest of this is just well just a fairly standard spacecraft carrying three missiles in and I have again used the uh, brightness filter just so you can see what's going on because it's very very dark uh, when it's like recorded and compressed by YouTube um, but yeah let's just it is kind of hard to get into this uh, firing tube because I've made it very very thin so a missile can just about eject so that no missile no enemy missiles can get in or as few as possible um, so yeah it's pretty much just a matter of trying to line this up because I'm actually right now caught on the side uh, this little bit of metal that stops things um, hitting my Corvette. Well, not hitting my Corvette, st th stop things um, tearing apart the insides of the Corvette. I have to say, though, without missiles in it, it is very vulnerable. So these are uh, a little bit of armor. So, yeah, we're just going to uh, try and position the camera inside the Corvette to see what's going on. You can see I'm caught on that little uh, panel there. So we'll just move across and then fly in quite violently because, well, I've just pretty much got to get into the firing tube. And this was a, quite a weird docking because it was quite hard maneuvering around these plates and things. But once you're kind of in and not getting stuck on things like I am here, it's actually really easy to dock because you're pretty much directed by the firing tube. Um, so yeah, you can see I keep getting caught on things. It's all of these decouplers and things are just getting in the way. Like every time it's just like getting locked on there. But um, I do manage to get down, although there is one more catch, uh, which was actually unforeseen. Um, the missiles are designed to fit in the firing tube. The probe, however, is not. So, I'm going to have to uh, ditch the probe and use the illustrious. Oh no, uh, it was just caught on another uh, decoupler. But the main problem after the, this next decoupler is the probe will not fit in there. Because it's made literally to allow uh, missiles to eject and nothing else. So they are about as small as possible. Um, which does worry me if they're shaking around. That might rip off, rip off a large piece of my beautiful Corvette. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we are stuck again, and this time it actually is on the probe. So I'm going to have to eject the probe and move closer to the missiles using the Corvette's reaction control system, which is fine. Reasonably easy just to burn forwards. Um, yeah, I get so close, and then I'm just pulled back. And I do try thrusting quite vigorously. <laughs> uh, make the jokes about that you want. I'm just doing space maneuvers. So yeah, this is kind of jammed and there's nothing I can do to get it through the door other than trying to shoot off panels and uh, I'm pretty sure the Corvette wouldn't be too happy about that or, although it isn't armed so it couldn't do anything so um, yeah it's a pretty you can actually see that it is a pretty bare bones interior there's like a bit of extra fuel down the middle and then it's just a shell to protect the firing system because that's what this is to me it's just literally some guns and some fuel uh, this Corvette actually can't go very far because it was built in the old days of nuclear engines requiring oxidizer um, but anyway, yes, so I have figured out at this point that this literally isn't going in there no matter how hard I push. So I'm just going to eject the probe and then try to use the Illustrious's uh, RCS to move in and dock. And it goes pretty well. It's not even that much shaking because it's very well lined up at this point. But yeah, this is pretty much jammed. So uh, let's get rid of this, please. Yes. See? Uh, there we go. Let's uh, decouple that. Uh, and then fly it away with some RCS, or maybe not, we'll just let it eject for now, we can fly it away later. Um, oh no, uh, yeah, I must have cut out the flying away. Well, I just ditched the probe, basically, and docked that with the RCS, and this was basically the, basically the same, so I thought I'd just show you maneuvering it in, um, and putting it on the docking board. Yeah, I thought I'd left the flying the probe away, but it doesn't really matter, it was literally just taking a probe, burning it prograde, and uh, a really short burst of RCS to get those missiles on. So yeah, um, we'll just get this through the door, um, and then I've forgotten what the next bit is. Wasn't paying attention in editing, I was just hacking apart my video clips. <laughs> but anyway, let's just throw this in, hopefully reasonably smooth, not very smooth. This actually went much worse, I bashed all the bits, I'd smacked the carrier, well not the carrier, I'd smashed the Corvette a lot. Um, I didn't smash it, I well, you know, just clicked it a lot, and then it was all out of 
sink and then I had to, I don't know, do a quick burn of stuff. But yeah, basically you can see here it's shaking around a lot when I did get to the docking. But it does go on there in after a little while. So yeah, it, it wasn't that bad. Um, that one was just a little bit harder. Uh, but yeah, that is now fully armed with anti, well, I guess capital ship missiles, or anti-literally anything or anything anywhere near you missiles, as I like to call them. Um, now we just need some anti-fighter missiles, and some fuel, actually. Um, I think we'll send up the anti-fighter missiles next episode, and fuel this episode, on my only normal-looking rocket today. Um, the uh, fairings are, well, it looks normal because the fairings aren't gigantic, because uh, this is just a small fuel payload, I guess a cargo resupply. Uh, let's hope it doesn't blow up on the way to the station. <laughs> Not that it's a station, or that it's made by SpaceX. Oh, oh, I really hope they don't have to call off Falcon Heavy this year. Anyway, but yeah, the uh, Russian resupply got to the station, so everything's fine! They've got food again, <laughs> probably. So yeah, uh, my fairly normal-sized fairing, fairly normal launch, I'll uh, probably just cut through this in a little bit, because it was reasonably uninteresting. Uh, it just went off fairly well, fairly routine, that sort of thing. Um, and then I'll just cut to... Uh, well, to the uh, refueling of the of the carrier, not the carrier. I keep calling it a carrier. I'm inclined to call all ships, ca all ha um, capital ships, carriers. Although it is just a corvette, uh, which is a much cooler name. Anyway, here we are, and it also has more than just uh, fuel. It has this uh, little radiator on here, which will help dissipate heat, because that's a new feature of the game, and this has always had overheating problems. Anyway, so I thought it would be best to uh, bring some things that would allow me to um, dissipate heat. So this is just going on the docking port. Uh, and then, well, once we've got rid of this uh, refuel stage, we'll just, um, well, we'll 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 just um, leave the leave the radiator in the new docking board. It's a little clunky, um, and it is uh, able to fold away, so it's uh, good for battle, basically. Um, so yeah, we'll just uh, refuel all of this, but that takes a little while. And the frame rate wasn't that bad, actually. I have to say, I it wasn't it wasn't terrible because it's not too many parts in a Corvette. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's that. Um, so once we have refueled, I've uh, brightened it all up again. And we'll just extend this radiator. It's just a small one that's there just for uh, helping to re reduce the overheating. I'm not sure how effective it will be, but uh, hopefully we won't be able doing too many long burns on this. And I was trying to find some um, meters to show me the uh, overheating, see if it was decreasing very quickly. Uh, it, it, it is, in fact, because it's on the status of cooling. However, um, the actual button to turn the heating gauges on is actually tied to my record button, so I wasn't much in the mood for turning off my recording right now. So, yeah, anyway, I hope you, there's a solid 12.5 frames a second. Yeah, the, uh, during the resupply, the frame did the frame rate did drop quite a bit, but uh, usually it's actually alright with their Corvette. I'm surprised. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this, because we are at the end of the episode, so yeah. Um, I'm in Turkey right now when you're watching this, so I thought I'd get this up just so you could have some more KSP to watch while I'm away. And hopefully there'll be a collaborative warfare, or I don't know when that'll go up. Or maybe it'll go up before I go to Turkey, probably. Um, I want views. So yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been uh, episode 11 of Kerbal Wars, and this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time. <laughs>